Hello and welcome back to the Survival Horror Guide, a series where we play and then review survival horror games. We rate them on their fear factor, and we give them an overall score. Finally, we send it over to the series' totally arbitrary rating system to see how it stacks up against the rest of the survival horror competition. Today for the show, it is Choose Your Own Adventure Time. We're checking out the latest in the Dark Pictures anthology, Little Hope. This is the second game in the Dark Pictures Anthology, coming about a year after the first entry in the series, Man of Medan. Now, I was pretty lukewarm on Man of Medan, but before Dark Pictures, the developer Supermassive released Until Dawn back in 2015, which I absolutely loved, so I was cautiously optimistic about Little Hope. And if you've played any of these games, then you know the formula, and Little Hope doesn't deviate from it. You control five different characters, playing each of them one at a time. And your actions, your decisions, your ability to successfully complete the quick time events have major implications on the outcome of the story. Get inside! Ooh. Ooh. Got an achievement for that shit. Relentless, dude. No. You're in charge of the fate of these characters, and it's because of this that these games are actually super fun to go back to and play through again and again to see all the different outcomes, or even just to see all the awesome ways the characters can be killed off. This is so scary. Oh, shit. shit. Dude, you killed Angela, dude. I actually played through this game in what's called movie night mode, where you can team up with friends and each person gets assigned a character. It's honestly a great way to play. It raises the stakes for when it's your turn, and your actions can even screw over other players. It's awesome. It was an accident. Oh, no. Oh, is it broken? Oh no! Oh shit. And being a story-oriented game, there's not much to discuss in terms of new gameplay or mechanics. So it really is all about the story, though I will say the game visually is really fantastic. From the characters to the environments, they're all top-notch. And I enjoyed the game's vibe and atmosphere, the foggy, rundown town. It obviously takes many cues from Silent Hill. As I mentioned earlier, this game has a ton of quick time events, QTEs, usually during intense moments of action, whether it's your character fighting a monster or getting chased. And the game has a clever way of introducing these mechanics to you early on. Like you arrive at a bar and there's this sequence where you throw darts at a board to get a feel of what it's like to complete the aiming QTEs. It makes sense, but the problem is playing on movie night mode, only one player got to try it out. <laughs> And later on down the line, when a character's life was on the line, of course, we got prompted with an aiming QTE, where the person playing had no experience with it. And what's funny is, the person who played the dart sequence at the bar never ended up needing to aim anything again during the entire playthrough. <laughs> this is obviously a non-issue in the single-player mode, but I still found it kind of fun. Oh shit! The inversion! Oh, it fucked me! The inverse fucked me! Now the story, I feel like this is where people will likely be divided. It actually starts off very strong. The opening sequence of this game is shocking and, and intense. It's effective. It starts off with an entire family being offed in the 70s, and then flashes forward to modern day, where it seems these same people, or other versions of them, have once again returned to Little Hope, like it's their fate or their destiny. There's this little girl running around named Mary, who had been accusing people of being witches and getting them executed. You see, our characters are having glimpses into the past of these witch trials, and it's up to us to uncover and decide if Mary is evil or if there's actually more going on here. I did find that there were some awkward moments in some of the writing and the scenarios, like why these guys are making such a big deal over throwing this rock through a window I will never know. Shit was like six feet away. What the hell is happening? Will you just get on? Just throw the fucking the rock, dude. The... Oh, yeah, see that? Right. We'll make a ball player out of you yet. You think a rookie could make a shot like that? But I was actually quite engaged all the way through. I really did want to see how this all played out. What was really going on here? What was the deal with these doppelgangers, the witches? I really dug the mystery aspect of the story, but. When the big reveal eventually happened, I know, I'm not going to spoil it, but I did not care for it. <laughs> and in a way, it cheapens the rest of the game, and I now view the whole thing in a different light. As I said earlier, these games have great replayability, but knowing the twist, knowing what I know now, I feel way less inclined to go back and play it again. You know the old saying, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey? Well, once you learn that the destination is a goddamn sham, 
it makes the journey feel pointless. But that's all I'll say about the story, and, you know, that's just like my opinion, man. Once it was done, though, we definitely had a lot to talk about. It was kind of interesting to discuss and dissect the story. Maybe earlier things that happened in the game were not exactly as they seemed. On the Fear Factor scale, this game is a 6. There are some sweaty palm moments, some intense moments where your character's life is clearly on the line, being pursued by one of the game's handful of monsters. It's that kind of in-the-moment horror, jump scares galore. Oh! Ah! Oh! <laughs> Not the type of haunting vibe that sticks with you after you're done playing. You'll sleep just fine after playing Little Hope. Overall, this game is a 7. It's good. I actually liked it more than the first Dark Pictures game, Man of Medan. Though it seems super massive, still can't quite capture the magic they had when they made Until Dawn. Oh! Oh! Hell. I know I have some gripes about the game's story, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't have a good time playing it. Now taking it over to the series totally arbitrary rating system, Little Hope is going to overtake Amnesia Rebirth to claim the fifth spot. We now have 10 games on the board, so how are we doing? Let me know what you guys think about the rankings so far. If you guys want to check out my full movie night mode playthrough of Little Hope, then you should definitely check out the Let's Play channel for all my horror game playthroughs and all kinds of other random stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of the Survival Horror Guide. As always, please let me know what you thought about it and hit the like button if you did enjoy it. It really does help this channel out a lot. And of course, keep the suggestions coming. Let me know what other games you'd like to see covered on this series in the future. Thanks for watching this one, guys. Peace.